Hello, I'm Will Cooper. I'm here to tell you about our FlowEasy GUI, a simple configuration tool for the MSP430 FR6X extended scan interface for flow metering applications. Before we dive into that, let's take a quick look at what flow metering is and how the MSP430 FR6X series can add value. The MSP430 FR6X microcontrollers can be useful in a number of flow metering applications, and we have a new FlowEasy GUI to make development easy. But before getting into that, let's take a step back and look at what a flow meter is. Flow meters come in a number of shapes and sizes, but it all comes down to measuring the rate at which a liquid or gas flows. This can be used in residential settings to measure water flow into your house, or can be used in commercial or industrial settings. If you take a look inside a flow meter, you'll find several key pieces. Flow sensors for sensing flow, for example, inductive, magnetic, or optical sensors. A signal conditioning circuit for filtering or amplification to convert the analog input into a signal suitable for processing. And a data processor or controller to receive a digital output of the analog flow information via the analog to digital converter, process the information, log the reading with the meter, and communicate that information through a dial, display, or wired wireless communication. A transmitter or transceiver is used to transmit data via RF or other communication channels to a second location. A power management unit is often included to control power consumption for longer battery lifetime, typically around 6 to 20 years to reduce maintenance costs. Additional functionalities include remote shutoff valve control and prepayment. So where does the MSP430 FR6X series fit in? These microcontrollers offer the low power, memory footprint, and integration ideal for these types of applications. These devices offer the lowest possible system power with 100 microamps per megahertz current consumption in active mode and 450 nanoamps in standby mode with the real-time clock enabled. Not only that, with up to 128 kilobytes of unified FRAM non-volatile memory, you can say goodbye to those old-fashioned flash-to-RAM ratios and ditch the external EEPROM. The flexibility continues with up to 100 pins on the device and integrated analog and digital components to reduce your bill of materials. This includes an integrated 320-segment LCD driver, 256-bit AES hardware accelerator, a differential ADC, and even our new extended scan interface. This integration makes the MSP430 FR6X series perfect for water, gas, and heat metering. So let's take a closer look at this new module. The Extended Scan Interface, or ESI module, is integrated in the MSP430 FR6X devices and is used to automatically measure linear or rotational motion with the lowest possible power consumption. This module incorporates dual analog front ends and processing circuitry to measure rotation using up to four sensors. The types of supported sensors include LC, resistive, and optical. Now you might be thinking, that ESI module seems like it could be tricky to configure. Well, TI has made it a whole lot easier with the FlowEasy GUI. The FlowEasy GUI can help you generate configuration code for the ESI module. It uses a simple graphical user interface and allows you to connect up to three LC sensors to the extended scan interface module. The tool provides fully functional CCS and IAR projects or source code that can be incorporated into custom projects. This is compatible with Code Composer 6 and IAR Embedded Workbench 6.1 or later. Plus, we will soon be offering new MSP430 FR6989 based flow meter evaluation kits that will pair easily with this GUI, offering a full end-to-end -end solution. You can learn more at http colon slash slash www.ti.com slash tool slash floweasy dash GUI. Ready to see how it works? The FlowEasy GUI can be downloaded and installed from the TI website, or you can download and access it through MSP 430 Wear. Once opened, you will see a very simple interface for building your sensor configuration. By clicking on the MSP or LC icons, and then clicking in the white space, you can add the components you need. For maximum flexibility, you have the option of auto-filling the MSP430 connections or connecting the sensors manually to the scan interface pins on the right-hand side of the microcontrollers. 
To do this automatically, just double click on the MSP430 microcontroller. To do this manually, you can click on a pin from the microcontroller and then click on the sensor pin you would like to connect. You will be notified if you try to connect a sensor incorrectly. Configuration windows are available by double clicking on the system components. You can use these windows to enter information about the sensors or the MSP430 being used. As you can see, the LC sensor allows you to input the inductor and capacitor values. Now let's take a look at the MSP430 configuration window. As you can see, you can adjust the configuration for the particular device and package you are using, but the more interesting part is configuring the ESI module. The ESI configuration tab is already set up for the most common use case, but you can adjust things like sampling frequency and clock speeds if desired. These tables can help users new to the ESI module to better understand what is being generated by the GUI. These tables show the automatic configuration of your time state machine and processing state machine, which are components of the extended scan interface. This is affected by the sensor configuration you created earlier. When it comes to choosing your hardware for code execution, you have the option to use the EVM430 FR6989 that will be available soon, or you can generate files based on your own board. Help files are available to help you configure the necessary board files if you choose to go with your own. You can also select various output options for outputting rotation data, including using an LCD display or LEDs. On top of configuring your target hardware, special interrupts are available so you can simply add the desired application code into your project. This can help you with everything from error handling to performing an action when a clockwise rotation is detected. Once your configuration settings are in, it's time to generate either full CCS or IAR project files, or just the ESI configuration files if you already have a project started. Select the option you need and click Generate. Once you load the CCS or IAR project and run the newly developed code on the board, the GUI lets you connect the board via UART on the Target Comms tab. Here you can calibrate your sensor or sensors and see them in action. This includes direction of rotation and a count of rotation in either direction. A built-in DAC in the Extended Scan Interface module offers auto calibration. Please keep in mind, counterclockwise rotations are displayed as you would see them in CCS, hence the negative value. The Debugging tab can then be used to see state information. Also, remember that you can save your project so that you can experiment with different sensor configurations or use the log files if you experience any issues. That's it, our simple GUI for configuration of the new Extended Scan Interface peripheral on the MSP430 FR6X microcontrollers. For more information on the FlowEasy GUI, visit ti.com slash tool slash FlowEasy dash GUI. And to learn more about the MSP430 FR6989 that enables our extended scan interface, check out the ti.com slash product slash MSP430 FR6989 page. Thanks for watching.